I'm gonna do like the most real video ever. I don't have my ring light. I just got off work and probably have hair on my face and I'm in my PJs, so whatever. This was very improv. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about any product or anything. I'm just gonna give an update on what I'm doing because I've realized I hate calling people and texting back and um as I got older, I've realized I have a reading disability and I have a really hard time typing sometimes because when I'm stressed, letters start to look the same and um, that's why I have a lot of typos and um, I'm better in person. I'm just much better in person. <laughs> so a quick update on where Sheer Fun is at. Um, I have been working on a salon space down in Santa Monica on Broadway for anybody who wants to come check it out. 626 Broadway, Santa Monica, right by the pier. Come get your hair done. I have worked on this space for like almost two months now and I think I'm like almost there. I had a lot of help getting it ready so I'm very thankful for that and um <laughs> There's already been like a lot of tears shed on the floor because my life's just never easy. Um, to give you guys like a real recap of what is going on in my life, it's been horrible. It, this move has been awful and uh, that's hard to admit out loud. <laughs> I, of course, sold my home in PA, drove across the country. I had an apartment for two weeks and I, I lied. I was here for two weeks and got an apartment. I moved all my stuff in and I bought a mattress to like let it fluff up overnight and I bleached everything because I'm a clean freak and I was in there and I'm like, I feel like there's like little bubbles under the paint on the ceiling in the bathroom and the vent sounded like a vacuum when you turned it on and it smelled musty but I like was like, well, it's been like shut up for a while, whatever. And it was rainy so... I left and came back the next day and left the dog there for a little bit and came back and I was going to take a nap and I was texting my brother and I'm like, there is nothing left over in this apartment besides like curtains and I'm sneezing and having an asthma attack and I started looking in the vents and stuff and there's all these black dots in there and I was like, that doesn't look like dust. Stormy, hey, get away from that. My dog had, thinks like there's something under the refrigerator. So she's been trying to get at it for days. And like I dug under there with a fork and everything. And I don't, I don't know what it is. So I'm over it. So anyways, I um, was in contact with my realtor and the landlord. And they ended up sending a mold specialist. And he even said like, oh, I like to check everything out first. Because if it's nothing, like I don't want to grab my stuff. And he looked in there and I was like, oh yeah, I want to grab it. So... The landlord ended up calling me later and he's like, well, the moisture gun, whatever, mold spore detector, didn't find anything. And, um, you know, and we had the carpet removed for the last people who were in there um, because they had allergies. And I'm like, oh, well, call them up and see how they feel now. The sun's starting to move. So now like the windows in my way. So the guy ends up offering me my money back. And... I haven't got the full amount to this day. Like it was just my um, like deposit to him, the the security deposit and the first month's rent. But the realtor still got paid like $1,800. And my realtor is telling me I'm supposed to get it back. <clears throat> the realtor told me like the landlord's supposed to pay it, but I made three separate money orders. So technically I should have had two other documents to sign that I was getting X, Y, Z amount of money back. So I'm still waiting for that. Also to that apartment is like still up for rent. So whatever. I wonder what the problem is. Um, I was stuck in a, a, a hotel from October to even now. Like I'm, I'm finally like in a situation of like um, a little studio I'm renting. But so I like looked at one place with my guy. I said, I really liked it. If we can't get the other ones, like this is cool. He disappeared, like literally like texted, called him, messaged him on the website thing. And so there was just multiple forms of communication. And 
he didn't really get back to me until I reached out to my realtor at home, who is amazing. If you guys ever need to sell a house or buy a house, go to Mary Ray Rocco from Berkshire Hathaway. She's wonderful. Not every realtor is as great as she is. And anytime that she kind of got involved, then he seemed to move on it. And it was just like really stressful. And I understand that they don't make a lot of money off of apartment, you know, moves. I, I get it. So like, I'm not that important, but at the same time, I just spent sixteen to seventeen thousand dollars in a on hotels, and that makes me sick. That's literally half of my savings. I read back in my text, and I was like, "I'm not gonna spend my savings after three months," and it's because I don't have any more. I don't have any more savings because I've spent it in hotel fees, and um, also I've lost credit cards during the move, so I have had to pay everything out of pocket for my salon. Um, I had my window smashed with a hammer in the parking lot at the hotel, which was great because, you know, if I just had my gated apartment, that probably wouldn't have happened. I had two rentals since I've been out here. I had one for the, the window debacle. And of course, it never rains in LA. And this is the most rain they've gotten in five years. And my window, you know, was smashed. I put like a garbage bag over it. But like, I was just like, great. Everything's probably getting wet. A guy from Ohio of all places slammed into me and hit me and uh, like we were playing bumper cars. So luckily his insurance paid for that, but I just have been hitting many roadblocks and I am now on to my third sport clips, uh, third time's the charm, but I've just realized like I, I really needed to get out of the house. I needed to make money and kind of, instead of keep spending it and Starting the whole Santa Monica salon um, is going to be very taskful. And um, it's kind of like a little sola space um, for those at home who haven't. It's a Phoenix, but um, it's similar to them of renting out like a little area. And it's super cute. I have a pink and gold barber chair, which I'm in love with and I want to use. But uh, they forgot to send like two bolts. So the whole thing just like flops back. And I'm like, well, it's a quick way to get your beard trimmed. But I'm not trying to break anybody's neck or anything, surprisingly. Maybe some people. So yeah, hopefully I get to wrap, wrap the salon up soon and start working out of that. But right now I am also at Sport Clips. I'm like a well-oiled machine there. Somebody wants to say hi. What are we doing? You want to say hi to everybody? She's been great. <clears throat> She's like... <laughs> she had to get left behind for Christmas, which... I couldn't imagine taking her on that plane. It would have been miserable. So she had to stay behind with Jada. I found her on WAG. When I went home for Christmas, um, for those who were able to get haircuts, thank you for coming to see me. I was super busy and didn't get to do a lot of the things that I thought I was gonna be able to do when I was home. But, um, but with the whole flight debacle, I was like, I cannot leave my dog with you know, a stranger for any longer. I was dying. I needed her. So I ended up renting a car and drove across the country again for the second time last year in like three months. But this time I took the Southern route and I was like, oh, I won't hit any bad weather. Right. And then I got the fucking Arizona. And Arizona uh, has mountains apparently. <laughs> And it was nighttime, so I couldn't see anything. I'm leading, like, this whole parade of cars down a mountain in Flagstaff, and it was brutal. So, yeah, I slept in gas station parking lots, and a friend of mine let me crash at their place for a night. And then I got back to California, and I was like, I am going to sell all my stuff and leave. I had a friend out here who sent me Furnish Finder, and a lady called me from there, and I ended up crying to her for, like, 30 minutes and she had me come over and see her place and uh we vibe very well she, we are best friends and she helps me take care of stormy and um i'm still trying to find a place but honestly at this point um i'm like content here she made me feel a lot better more at home so kind of when i moved in here everything just like fell into place i started working again and by again i mean like every day but it's good and I'm happy to feel more stable. And it's nice I have, uh, you know, a nice little, <laughs> look at this dog. I have some help here. 
My landlady is my Cali mom. Stormy loves it, so we're good. But yeah, um, I'm not ready to pack it up and go home yet, so people keep texting and asking, and I'm not ready. I'm not ready. But all in all, I'm doing much better than I ended in 2022. I really thought 2022 was going to be my year because, like, my birthday is March 22nd. I applied for my business license on June 22nd. My salon inspection was October 22nd. So I was like, this fits, right? 2022 was horrible. It was absolute dog shit. <laughs> and thank God we're not going back. But for anybody who has texted and called and um, wanted to know how I am, if I'm mean, I'm sorry, I'm stressed. <laughs> and I hope this all explains why I'm distant and things are just constantly moving and changing. And sometimes it's easier to just not talk about it because mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed. And when I was younger, I, I think back to like my guitar lessons, mm -hmm. my mom would be like, what did you learn today? How was it? Da -da 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 -da. And I'm like, fine. But then, like, I'd want to talk about it, like, three days later and be like, oh, here, look what I learned. But it's, I I need, like, space to reflect and calm down and find the words I want to say and the feelings mm -hmm. that I actually want to feel because sometimes I'm very optimistic. So, um, in the moment, I'm like, yeah, and then I come back home and I'm like, no, what did I do? <laughs> I sold my beautiful home to my best friend who is very deserving of it, but man... I miss my house. <laughs> but I think about my Uncle John driving around in his van all the time. And like, man, in three months, if I don't find a place, like, I'm just gonna have to get a van like Uncle John. But it was really cool because in the morning, I would wake up and he'd be like driving us to Burger King or something for breakfast. And you didn't have to get out of bed. It was literally breakfast in bed. So, um, yeah, I don't know. The van life doesn't sound too bad. As long as I have like a little home to go back to with all of my stuff. I feel good at the end of the day and being in a hotel room just constantly felt like vacation and then I looked at my bank account and was like holy shit I have to sleep in my car which I did attempt and it was not as comfortable as the gas station because I couldn't climb in the back my my car is packed full of shit yeah I have a lot of things I can't even relax <laughs> I can't even recline my seat in the car and I don't know how people do it. So kudos to them. I caved and used my Hilton points. And in that time frame, I found this little joint. So Stormy's back under the fridge. But yeah, eventually I'm going to get my life together. And uh, I do have friends here, believe it or not. I have a cousin, Bryce, who is super amazing and uh i'm glad that i have some family here it makes it feel a little more normal and shout out to him for screwing my cabinets in the wall we're just gonna cross our fingers and hope for the best that they stay up there and bryce and i were on let's make a deal he asked me to go with him and i was like whatever i've never watched a show before so i didn't know you're supposed to dress in costume but i wore this like blood splatter one piece thing with like a leather jacket and leather boots pleather or whatever they're like oh it's your outfit and I was like I don't know I guess I'm the unicorn killer because Bryce had this inflatable unicorn outfit the way that they sat us in the audience the guy was like we're putting her here I was like yeah look at me obviously they want me up front because he was the one who knew like I never watched a show before but listen I sold it like I was on WWE I was like yeah pick curtain number two no take the money I have had some big moments for like me internally here. I went out to a bar and I just happened to run into one of my whole three friends there. And I was like, oh my God, I'm in Los Angeles in the same place. Like I just ran into someone I know. And I was, I've only been here for like three months. I felt so cool. This weekend, I'm going to go watch a band. So I'm doing things. Um, there's times where like, I'm like, oh, this is great. And other times where I'm like, I hate it here. What did I do? But anytime I'm like really feeling shitty, I just drive to the beach and I remind myself of why I came here. And it's to one day do a haircut, looking over the ocean, giving somebody Reiki and calling it a day. That's my life mission. If it's here, wherever, I'm going to fucking do it. <laughs>
I also had a lot of help getting back home to get back to Stormy, so thank you everybody. Um, that was the most stressful trip of my life and I don't see me coming back to Pittsburgh anytime soon. I really went home because my mom unfortunately had COVID and couldn't come out here, so I needed a fix. I was very happy to see my clients. That honestly was the, one of the best parts of my trip was coming home and cutting hair and seeing everybody, so thank you. And I really do appreciate all the messages that I do get. I just get overwhelmed. So if I read it and don't reply, just know that I was like, oh, that was very nice. And when I'm not depressed, I will get back to you. <laughs> As I'm so optimistic, I don't like to talk to people when I don't have good things to share. And my life has not been very good lately. So um, acceptance is the first part. And I had a friend tell me, he was like, all right, like your life sucks, but like, what are we going to do to fix it? And I was like, you're right. What are we going to do? And Anastasia, my best friend in the world, was like, Haley, if you don't change something, you're going to die. And I know that's dramatic, but that's what you need to hear. And she does tell me things I don't want to hear often, but I appreciated that. And I'm going to overcome this. And the most important lesson she taught me was her therapist once asked her, do you know somebody who loves themselves, like completely in love with themselves? And she said, yes, my friend Haley. <laughs> and she was right. I used to have like tons of self-love and thought I was the shit. And um, oh no, a lot of things in life got to me. And I want to be a role model and we are not supposed to act like that. So... I am going to be a better person in 2023. I'm going to find that self-love again. <laughs> so I hope everybody has a good year and uh, stay tuned with where I go next with everything. I may be converting my Shopify account to Vigaro to run all my appointments and uh, sell product that way so it's a little easier all in one site again. So if you have the app still, just keep it because you never know when I will be back. So stay tuned. It's my favorite saying. Um, hopefully the next video will be in the cool new salon, the relocation of sheer fun. I am super proud of myself for having that spot and I don't want to give up on it. So hopefully I get my shit together. I listened to my horoscope podcast and for a lot of us, the next five months are going to set us up for the next 12 years. So buckle up and get your rocks ready and burn your sage and pay attention. Now Stormy's like stuck between a chair. I gotta go. Thank you everybody for listening to my bullshit and I will be more positive next time. See ya.